Good morning. Good morning. We ask on each and every one, if you're willing and able, would you please stand? The words to the song, Blessed Assurance, reads, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit and washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising the savior all the day long. Question is, what is your story? What is your song? Are you willing to praise our Savior all the day long? Hebrews in 1 tells us now that faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. What is your story and what is your song? Do you have that blessed assurance? Father in heaven, we come before you with the assurance that you are with us. We come to you, Father God, with the assurance that it was only you that have kept us. We come to you with the assurance that it was you who first loved us and that it was you who sent your son, your son to hang blood, blood. he hang, he died, and he bled on the cross, and then he rose again. It is with that assurance that we come before you on this day and that we are willing more than willing to lift up our voices and to let you know that we know whom we serve. God, we thank you. We're going to adore you. We're going to give you all that we have on this day like this is our last day. This is our story. This is our song. And we're going to praise you all the day long. Amen. Amen. Come on, can we put our hands together for the Lord Jesus on this wonderful morning? How many know the Lord is good and he's worthy to be praised? Do I have a witness in the building on this morning? Yes, sir. If you know the Lord has been good to you, as the old singers used to sing the song, you ought to show some sign by putting your hands together, opening your mouth and giving God a thunderous round of worship and praise in this place. Now, we're going to go back a little bit. We're going to do a call and response number. And uh, some of you, if not all of you, uh, may know this. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. We got something for old school this morning. Is that all right? Amen. And then we're not going to leave the new school out, but we just want to, amen, help celebrate the old school this morning. Is that all right? Put your hands on it like this. Come on. Simple song that says, Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. You ought to bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Oh, come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus. You ought to bless that wonderful name. Name of Jesus. No 
wonderful name, oh Jesus. You ought to bless that wonderful name. Oh Jesus. Come on, bless that wonderful name, oh Jesus. No other name I know. There is power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Just bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Everybody bless the Lord with me. Come on, say that. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Everybody bless the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord Here we go. with me. Everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it. Hallelujah. Everybody say now. Hallelujah. Lift your voices and say. Hallelujah. Come on and dance before the Lord. Everybody dance before the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dance. dance before the Lord. You ought to dance before the Lord. Everybody said now dance before the Lord. Everybody dance before the Lord. Lift your voices and dance sing. before the Lord. Oh, dance before the Everybody just clap your hands. Everybody just clap your hands. Put your hands if you love Jesus. Put your hands if you love Jesus. Come on. Everybody just clap your hands. Everybody say hallelujah. 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 Everybody say now. So it's apparent that most of you didn't come for worship this morning. So we'll uh, we just move on to the next song. But if there's anybody in this room that loved Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I dare you to just lift your hearts. And sometimes I understand that in certain, certain settings and atmospheres, mm. it's difficult for Us, even as people of God, sometimes we have a difficult time expressing the true sentiment of our heart as it relates to God and as it relates to worship. But if I can just be transparent for a moment, in my past histories, I wasn't ashamed when I went out to the club. I wasn't ashamed when I went to my favorite team's ball games. I wasn't ashamed when I went to parties and I didn't mind partying. 
even though I wasn't partying for Jesus. But isn't it strange that when we cross over on the Lord's side, we get quiet. And it is as if we are ashamed to lay claim to our Savior. But after all, it was Jesus who died for our sin. It was Jesus who paid the ultimate price that you and I would have and inherit eternal life. And so I realize that as a believer now, I can say and declare, even as Paul stated, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to those of us who believe. Do I have any believers in the building this morning? Do I have anybody who, who's not ashamed of his name? Who's not ashamed to call on him? Who's not ashamed to bless him? Who's not ashamed to honor him? Oh, because it was the Lord who woke you up this morning. It was the Lord who started you on your way. Oh! And so in a moment in an atmosphere like this, we simply come to bless and to honor him who is king of kings, Lord of lords. He is the God that was and it is and he is to come. And so we bless you by singing glory to the Lamb. Salvation and glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Everybody say glory to the Lamb. Unison, everybody. Glory to the Lamb. We sing. Come on, sing it. Glory to One more time, one more time. One more time. Say, everybody, say glory. Glory. That's it. To the Lamb. We sing glory to the Lamb. Everybody sing glory to the Lamb. Yes, sir. Glory. Glory. That's it. Come on. To the land. For. For he is Alpha. Omega. Omega. Forever. Forever. Is he. He reigns. He reigns. Forever. Forever. Holy. Holy. To the Lamb. To the Lamb. Come on, say. Glory to the Lamb. Everybody sing glory, glory to, to the Lamb. To the Lamb. Glory, to glory to the Lamb. For he, for he is Alpha. Omega. Omega. Take it up. Glory. Glory to the Lamb.
Yeah, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. The Bible declares that the heavens declare the handiwork of our God. The scripture also declares that the angels bow before the Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. And they all exclaim, glory, glory yes. to the Lamb yes. that was slain. Yeah, yeah. To him be glory. Yes honor, yes. dominion, yes. power, yes. majesty, yes. and might yes. to the Lamb. Yes, sir. To the Lamb. Yes. I said to the Lamb. Yes. His name is Jesus. Yes. He is the King of Kings. Yes. He is the Lord of Lords. Yes. He is the El Shaddai, yes. the Elohim, the El Elyon. He is yes. my Savior. Come on, I wish I had a witness in the building this morning that didn't mind shouting his name. Glory, everybody. Glory. Glory. Johnny. Glory, glory. Yeah. Glory. glory to the Lamb. Glory yes. to the Lamb. Yeah. Glory yes. to the Lamb. Glory yes. to the Lamb. Sister Hazel. Katrina, Katrina. Sandra. Hallelujah. I'm going to do something off the cuff. I know this ain't this is not a part of our routine. But I just feel led of the Holy Spirit. Is that all right? Yeah. I said I just feel led of the Holy Spirit. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah. Anybody don't mind being led of the Holy yeah. Spirit? Yeah. I'm going to ask my brother Sherman. I just yeah. felt led of the Holy Spirit yeah. to pull on him this morning. Just tugging in my spirit. Yeah, yeah. I just feel something in the room this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, brother Sherman. Come oh, on. Brother. Oh, 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 glory. Yeah.
morning to God's very good creation. Good morning. Let's go to God in the word of prayer. Blessings, honor, majesty, and power to the Lamb of God. There is no other name like the name of Jesus. In the heavens or under the sun. Father God, we come before you. Humble, thankful, grateful. Confessing, Lord God, that we are just unworthy. Undeserving, Lord God, of this day that you have given us. You have woke us up, Heavenly Father, in our right minds and stand bottom. For you, God, we give you praise. For no one else, Heavenly Father, has the power to do such. You got us up and on our way, Heavenly Father, and you brought us to this place, Lord. A place, Father God, where we praise you, where we come to worship you, Lord with all that we have, Heavenly Father, and all that we are. Because it's what you have poured into us, Heavenly Father, that we pour back out to you. And humble submission and thanksgiving, Heavenly Father. Because we do not have to be standing here this morning, Heavenly Father, able to you be all the praise, honor, and glory, Lord. For all that you have brought us from, all that you have brought us through, and all that you have taken us through, Lord. Father God, we don't go through it like the Heavenly Father because we know that we're not alone, that you are always with us. You are by our side. Father God, when we bend, Heavenly Father, when we break, your mercy is there, Heavenly Father, to carry us through. When we fall, Heavenly Father, and when we fail to be obedient to your will, Heavenly Father, we confess, Heavenly Father, and you are faithful to forgive. Every blot, every stain, Heavenly Father, every blemish that is before you this morning, Heavenly Father, we, we seek forgiveness of, Heavenly Father. We ask that you would cleanse us, wash us, Heavenly Father, that we stand before you white as snow. We bring, Father God, the cares of our hearts and lay them down at your altar. Where we're struggling, Heavenly Father, in our faith, Heavenly Father, we know, God, that you will strengthen us because our weakness is made perfect, Heavenly Father, by your strength. When our minds are not quite white, Heavenly Father, we know that you are there to remove the confusions, Heavenly Father, to keep us bound to our sins. We know, Heavenly Father, that there's a word for us that will encourage us, Heavenly Father, when we want to grow weary you tell us, Heavenly Father, to faint not, to keep moving forward, Heavenly Father, to hold fast to what we know. And we know, Heavenly Father, there's nothing too hard for you. When we feel, Heavenly Father, that we are just not able, Father God, to keep our children in line, Heavenly Father, you bring to man, Heavenly Father, your word. And if they're trained up in the way that they should go, Heavenly Father, we know that the word will not depart from them. We know that it is always in them, Heavenly Father, and they will be brought back. We hold fast to those truths, Heavenly Father. When our finances don't look like what they should, Heavenly Father, we have to recall, Heavenly Father, that there's no bank, Heavenly Father, like your bank. It is full and it is plenty, Heavenly Father. And you tell us, Heavenly Father, that you will pour out a blessing for us. If we hold fast, Heavenly Father, to what we know. You are God and God all by yourself, Heavenly Father, and there is no other like you. We hold fast, Heavenly Father, to being able to look up to where our help comes from. It comes from no other than you, Heavenly Father, through the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us, Heavenly Father. When the road before us looks dark, Heavenly Father, you are a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We hold fast to those truths, Heavenly Father. 
you are a way maker. When we're sick, Heavenly Father, when illness has come upon us, Lord, and sometimes, Father God, we may have the doubts of giving up. The blood of Jesus cleanses, Heavenly Father. Healing can be spoken with a word, Heavenly Father. Near or far, Heavenly Father. So we know that you are able to heal, Lord, if it be thy will. We hold fast to those truths, Heavenly Father. That will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It may not look like what we want it to look like, Heavenly Father. But you are a promise keeper. You'll never leave nor forsake us, Heavenly Father. So we know that it will be taken care of, Heavenly Father, that all is well. So we bless your name, Lord. We praise you, Father God, for what you've done and what we expect you to do. You are our God. Our Father, and we are the children of your pastor. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you are doing. We come together, Father God, as a whole, being on one accord. Believe us, Heavenly Father. Growing together in Christ, Lord. Asking you, Heavenly Father, to watch over us and keep us. This congregation, Heavenly Father, and every congregation, Heavenly Father, that meets but you as the head. We know that you are in control of it all. You are the unstoppable God. Help us not to lean unto our own understanding, Heavenly Father, our own desires, Heavenly Father, our own wants, Heavenly Father. But lean unto you, Lord, seeking your face, Heavenly Father, in all that we do individually and as a whole. That you may come, Father God, and heal our land. We stand in need of you today, Lord, more than we did yesterday. We know that you are an able God. You are able. Help us to stand fast, Heavenly Father. To wait to see your salvation, Lord. Not take matters into our own hands, Heavenly Father. But continue to cry out to you, praising you and thanking you, God. I confess, Heavenly Father, that my life isn't rosy, Lord, as most of our lives are in this day and in this age, when people are falling away from the faith, Heavenly Father, turning away from you, Lord. Father God, I pray for them. I pray, Lord, that you would send the saints into their past, Heavenly Father, to bring them back, Lord. Because when one returns, Heavenly Father, all of heaven rejoices. And we too, as your people, rejoice, Lord. I ask that you continue to strengthen us in our journey each and every day, Heavenly Father. Each and every day you have blessed us to have, and each and every day you shall give us, Lord, because tomorrow is not promised. So in this day, today, Heavenly Father, let us be your people, Heavenly Father, the sheep of your pastor, in your vineyard, Lord, working, laboring, Heavenly Father, for our labor is not in vain. Though we may never see the harvest, Heavenly Father, as we labor, we know, Father God, that you shall give increase into this harvest, Lord. So we thank you, Father God, that you even deem to look upon us, to use us. And as we go about your business, Heavenly Father, we give all our courage over to you, knowing that there ain't better hands, Heavenly Father. And we give you thanks, Lord God for this life that you've given us, this life we don't deserve. We thank you for every mercy and every grace, Heavenly Father, you extend our way. We thank you, Father God, for a love that we shall find no other place, Heavenly Father. There is no other love, Father God, than that that you have for your children, that you will give your son to die just so that we may live this day. Help us not to continue to take it for granted, Heavenly Father, we'll be thankful, grateful. And we'll give you, God, all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Because only you and you alone are worthy, Lord. We ask that you continue the best the man over this house, Heavenly Father. Continue to use him, Heavenly Father, to your glory. Continue to keep him, Heavenly Father. 
Keep his mind, Heavenly Father, and keep his heart. Continue to bless the woman that you placed beside him. Let us stand behind him, Heavenly Father, no matter what it looks like, knowing, Heavenly Father, that you and you alone are in control. That nothing happens, Heavenly Father, that you do not ordain. Help us, Heavenly Father, continue to seek the lost and continue to use us, Heavenly Father, to find them. Continue to bless those behind prison walls with your word, Heavenly Father. They, even though they may not be incarcerated, Heavenly Father, they can't be free. Move in and through, Heavenly Father, the nursing homes, the hospital, Heavenly Father. Healing words be thy will, Heavenly Father. Continue to watch over our orphans and our widows, Heavenly Father, and use us. Use us, Heavenly Father, as in your word. Let us be about your business, Heavenly Father, not just learning about it, not just reading about it, Heavenly Father, but acting on it day by day. And not to, Father God, try to put ourselves on pedestal because all the glory, praise, and honor belongs to you and you alone. Continue to humble us, Heavenly Father, where we stand in need of humbling. That we may be, Heavenly Father, the good people that you are training us up to be, that you are molding and shaping, Heavenly Father. And we give you all the praise and all the glory as we thank you for your Son, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. There is no other. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, whom all blessings flow through. We thank you for him, Heavenly Father, today and every day. And it's in his precious, his matchless, priceless name, the name above all other names that we pray, that we ask for all things. And the people of God said, amen. Amen. What well, did all that? Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Do we have any first time visitors with us? If so, would you please stand? Do we have any first time visitors? If so, would you please stand? It appears that everyone is at home. We'd like to welcome those who may be uh, visiting with us for the first time by live streaming. And those of you that are here, consider yourself welcome and at home and let God use you any way that he sees fit. Um, next Saturday, we will be celebrating our women's annual uh, women's ministry conference. That's next Saturday, it's October the 26th. It will start at 10, will be from 10 to 1 a.m. And we're encouraging and inviting each and every one of you to come out and be with us. Sister Glenneva Spirit, uh, Smith will be in the uh, multi-purpose room after service, and she will be selling tickets. Tickets are $10, and you can also purchase tickets at the door. Also, next week, next Sunday, will be the Making Strides for Breast Cancer Walk, and that is next Sunday, October the 27th. If you need any more information, we ask that you will see Sister uh, Sandra Robinson. Pastor Nelson is out um, today. If you read in Luke,
uh, I think it's chapter 2, between verses 41 and 49, that is when, where we find that Joseph and Mary, Mary had traveled to, back to their country to pay their tithes, and um, then they were on their journey home, and they missed Jesus, thinking that Jesus was with them, and he wasn't. And so they went back, and they found him in the temple, and they were asking him, well, why were you not with us, and we didn't know that you were missing, and Jesus' reply was, did you not know that I had to be about my father's business? So on today, Pastor Nelson is at Eddyville. It is a place where he's been trying to get into, as he stated, for several years to go in and to preach, teach, and to bring the word. When he had that opportunity today, he's bringing three sermons there today. And so our prayer is that someone that is lost will be saved on this day through his ministry. So with Pastor Nelson not being here, we'd have you know that he is being about his father's business. And in his absence, one of his sons, God's sons, one of our very own will bring the word, and that is none other, none other than Minister Chan Nelson. We all, if you haven't heard of him, we know him, and if you don't know either, you will know and will, will have heard after he speaks today at 11. So at this time, we just ask that each and every one of you, if you would just stretch your hand toward Minister Chan. Say, Minister Chan, Minister Chan. preach the word. Preach the word. Amen. Amen. God use you. At this time, it is offering time. Amen. 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 It is offering time. Amen. If you need an envelope, we'd ask that you would raise your hand, please. It is just time to give back what God has so freely given us. We are to give of our time, our talent, and our treasures. We ask that you would go ahead and stand. We ask that our ushers and our officers will make their way down front. You can't beat God's giving no matter how you try. We ask that you would please stand. thankful for the praise team and coming in such an awesome matter and the spirit revealing himself among his people Amen. that God is good all the time and all the time God is good father in heaven we come before you and we are just thankful that we are a part of your kingdom, we are a part of your family. We thank you for the way that you just continue to take care of us, to love on us, to lavish us. We thank you, Father God, just for the way that you take care of us from day to day. For if it had not been for you on our side, where would we be? We ask right now that you would just bless this offering to be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom, that everything that is done is done decent and in order. We ask right now forgiveness of sins and shortcomings. We thank you, God, for what you not only have done, what you're doing right now. We're going to praise you in advance for what you're about to do. Let our giving be evidence of our thankfulness, of our unworthiness, but as well as of our praise. In the name of Jesus, we all say together, amen. We ask that you would start from the rear and come around.
and ruler of every living thing. He is on the throne. He is my all, and he is my God. Oh! 
Lord is blessing me right now. If you love the Lord, why don't you give him some praise? Now that's okay. That, 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 that was okay. Um, but I didn't ask you to clap for me. I said, why don't you give God some praise? getting better getting better um, I don't like that church feels like a show I don't like the feeling that we just come in here every week and just run through a program and go home so let me try this a different way if you don't mind just close your eyes And I want you to think about your deepest, darkest situation. I want you to think about where you were, how you felt, the circumstances, the storms, the trials, the troubles. Think about your deepest, darkest circumstance. Now think about how God brought you out of that. Now do me a favor, give God some praise. Some of us need to understand that part of our breakthrough in worship is being a part of worship. You can't get without giving. That's why he says, give and it shall be giving. Amen. Thank God for our pastor who is out. He's also my father. Although he's not here, um, as many of you know, he just celebrated another birthday and another year of life. Let's give God some praise for that. Pray for his strength as he brings the word somewhere else. Uh, let us pray. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. God, we pray that our praise and worship has been pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Now, God, as we dive into your word, I pray that you stand in front of me, stand behind me, and then cap your angels all around me. God, if you don't do it, it can't be done. If you don't say it, it can't be said. If you don't speak, God, it can't be heard. If you don't move, it can't be felt. So now, God, I pray that you open our minds, open our hearts, and allow us to focus them on you. God, we pray that you forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. It's in the mighty, matchless, majestic, most powerful name that we know. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast of the Lord. Let the humble hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Why? For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who trusts in him. If you're excited about who God is and what he's done in your life, do him a favor. Show some sign. Amen. I won't be long as you know. Um, I'm from the call and response tradition, which means as long as you confirm or can't confirm what I say, when I speak, you speak back, and we'll be out of here in 20 minutes. If you don't say amen, we could be in here for an hour. Amen. If you have your Bibles, please turn them to Romans chapter 12. Starting with verse 1. Romans chapter 12. It's in the New Testament. Sixth book right after Acts. If you got it, say, I got it. If not, say, hold up. If not, it's on the screen. 
All right, these words are recorded. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Verse 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Verse 3. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. Just for a moment, I want to talk from the thought, I want to be like Christ. I want to be like Christ. It says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable worship. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man his own measure of faith. I want to be like Christ. All of us at some point in our life have had a role model or someone that we've looked up to we've followed them for some time we've told ourselves one day i'm gonna be just like them for some of us we look at our parents and say i want to be just like my dad or i want to be just like my mom and i want to be just like this person all of us have had a role model at some point in this life Growing up in the era I did, many of my friends played sports, and for me, sports has always been a big thing. Football was big, but basketball has, all been, has always been bigger. And around the city and the state and even the country when I was growing up, there was a saying and a slogan and almost a way of life that encompassed everything that was going on at the time. It dealt with basketball. It dealt with people who had hoop dreams. And every person that put on a pair of shoes and stepped on a court lived by this slogan. And it read, if I could be like Mike. You see, this just wasn't a slogan or a saying. It was a commercial. It was a song. It was a way of life that was drilled into every boy and young girl's mind, young and old. The dream that Michael Jordan, the greatest of all time, was who you strive to be. And they even had a song that went something like this. Sometimes I dream that he is me. You've got to see that's how I dream to be. I dream, I move, I dream, I groove. If I could be like Mike, oh, if I could be like Mike. Again, I try, I just need to fly. For just one day, if I could be that way. I dream, I move, I dream, I groove. If I could be like Mike. Oh, if I could be like Mike. You see, Michael Jordan, when I was growing up, was an iconic figure. He was the picture in everyone's room. He was the thought in everyone's mind. He was the shoes on everyone's feet. When they hit the basketball court, you would see kids laying the ball up with their tongues out, chewing, chewing gum during basketball games, even drinking Gatorade that he was promoting at the time. You see, Michael was the one who, who, who you strive to be like. You see, Michael was the one that hit the last second shot. He was the one that had the best defense on the floor. He was the one 
one that everyone looked to when the game was close or on the line. Yeah, when anybody hit the court, the thought that they would be the next Michael Jordan was always on their mind because he was the only one that could move like he moved. He was the only one that could shoot the way he shot. He was the only one that could dunk the way he dunked and take over a game the way he did. You see, Michael Jordan was the man. If I could be like Mike. Unfortunately, today's generation won't know much about the great things that Michael Jordan accomplished because he paved the way for a new set of athletes to come and take his place. Allen Iverson, the crossover king, Kobe Bryant, almost an exact replica of Jordan, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Stephen Curry, James Harden, Michael Westbrook, Donovan Mitchell, John Wall, Kyrie Irving, and the list goes on. You see, it seems as though now everyone who steps on a court wants to be like one of these people. They want to be dominant like LeBron, shoot like Steph, take over like Kevin Durant, dribble like Kyrie, or step back like James Harden. But I stopped by to tell you, none of them are Michael Jordan. You see, Jordan's individual and accolades and accomplishments include six NBA Finals as the Most Valuable Player Award, 10 scoring titles, five MVP awards, 10 All-NBA First Team designations, nine All-Defense First Team honors, 14 NBA All-Star Game selections, three All-Star Game MVP awards, three steal titles, and the 1988 NBA Defensive Player of the Year Award. You see, he holds the NBA record for the highest career regular season scoring average at 31 points per game and the highest career playoff scoring average with 34 points a game. In 1999, Michael Jordan was named as the greatest North American athlete of the 20th century by ESPN and was second to Babe Ruth on the Associated Press's list of athletes during the century. Jordan is a two-time inductee into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame and having been enshrined in 2009 for his individual career and again in 2010 as a part of the induction of the 1992 United States Men's Olympic Basketball Team, also known as the Dream Team. He became a member of the FIBA Hall of Fame in 2000 2015. But even in all his grandeur and glory, even with all of his accolades and accomplishments, I stopped by to tell somebody that there's somebody greater than him. Yeah, you see, Michael could shoot, but there's somebody greater. Michael played great defense, but there's somebody greater. Michael had the ability to make everybody on his team look good, but I stopped by to tell you that there's somebody greater than MJ. I didn't come to to you to talk to you about MJ. I didn't come to you to talk about role models. I came to talk about Christ, a God that knows the very hairs on your head, a God that protects you through all hurt, harm, and danger, a God that will show up when you least expect it and right in the nick of time. Yeah, MJ has a good track record, but I stopped by here at First Baptist at 11 o'clock to tell somebody there's somebody greater and his record is impeccable. He's a doctor that's never lost a patient. He's a lawyer that's never lost a case. He's a friend when you're friendless. He's a mother when you're motherless. He made death. But hey, if I had time, I would tell you how he supplied Abraham with a ram in the bush. If I had time, I would tell you how, 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 how he rained manna from heaven and water from a rock. If I had time, I would tell you how he parted the Red Sea just for the Israelites. If I had time, I would tell you how he stepped into the fiery furnace with the Hebrew boys. He has a track record and his record is impeccable. If I had time, I'd tell you how he shut the mouths of lions. If I had time, I'd tell you how he took over the walls of Jericho. If I had time, I would tell you how he changed Saul into Paul. I just stopped by to tell somebody that his record is impeccable. His accolades are great. He cannot be topped. He cannot be beaten and there is no replacement. I just stopped by to tell you there's somebody 
somebody greater than MJ, and his name is Jesus Christ. Is there anybody in the building that can testify? I know that name. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. As a matter of fact, the Bible declares every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. I just stop by to tell you there's somebody greater. He's undefeated and he has a track record. And even though I'm broke, busted, and disgusted, he still grants me grace and mercy when I don't deserve it. You see, grace is God granting things I don't deserve. Uh, let me put it to you like this. Grace is a birthday gift that I get when it's not my birthday. Grace is like God replenishing the money in the bank even though I refuse to pay my tithes and offering. I'm trying to help somebody. Grace is forgiving me, although I can't forgive the person next to me. I know y'all used to me being a little more energetic. I'm just, I'm just trying to give you some substance before we shout. You see, grace is God granting me the things I don't deserve. My health and strength, the movement of my limbs, even though I don't deserve it. Grace is God giving me a birthday gift, even though it's not my birthday. And, 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 and then he gives me mercy. You see, mercy is the opposite. Mercy is God withholding things I do deserve. Mercy is God keeping things from me that were intended to kill me. The Bible declares the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. God grants me grace and mercy. As a matter of fact, a songwriter said it like this, his forgiveness is more than the drops in the ocean. And I just wonder if I got about two or three people that can testify that I'm so thankful for God's grace and God's mercy. Because if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I'd still be broke, busted, and disgusted. I'd still be a wretch undone. I'd still be homeless. I'd still be a drug addict. I'd still be a prostitute. I know I'm not talking about you just look straight, but I, I, I stopped by to testify that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, that's why David said, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. He said, he forgives me of all of my sins. Church folks don't know when to shout. He said he heals me of all of my diseases. He said he redeems my life from the pit. He said he crowns us with love and compassion and he satisfies our life with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. I just stopped by for a couple of minutes to tell you that there's somebody greater and as I grow, I find myself wanting to be less like Mike and more like Christ. I want to be like Christ. You see, Paul writes this letter to the Romans to explain to them the justification and salvation of Jesus Christ. He writes this letter to give the Romans what they need for life and liberty, and this is why we preach. You see, we preach because of the gospel. In Romans chapter 1, he gives them the thesis of everything that they need. In verse 16, he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is by the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and also to the Greek. You see, Paul showed how humans being lacked how, how humans lack God's righteousness because of, because of our sins in chapters 1 through 3. Then in chapters 4 and 5, he talks about how we receive God's righteousness when God justifies us by faith. Then he demonstrates God's righteousness by being transformed to rebels, to followers in chapters 6 through 8. Then he confirms his righteousness when God saves the Jews in chapters 9 through 11. And then he applies his righteousness in practical ways throughout our lives in chapters 12 through 16. You see, in other words, Paul gives us the rundown in the 411 of what we need. He gives them the gospel. And today, we are still in a position where we need the gospel. You see, when the leader of the free world can't put together a coherent speech, the gospel is still needed. When babies are making babies and babies are dying, the gospel is still needed. 
defeated, when homes are falling apart and unforgiveness is at an all-time high, the gospel is still needed. When black Americans can't feel safe at home without getting shot, the gospel is still needed. When racism and segregation are still alive today, the gospel is still needed. When church folk don't look like church folk, I stop by to tell somebody the gospel is still needed. And Paul writes this letter to the Romans to tell them you need to look more like Christ. He gives them the gospel. You do know what the gospel is, don't you? In the Greek, this word is euan gilion. It simply means good news. You see, the, the gospel is simple. It's just good news. The good news that Jesus and God left who he was. He wrapped himself up in flesh. He came down 40 and two generations. He walked the streets of, 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 of Damascus. He, 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 was, he was held on Calvary and then he died and then he rose again and then he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. That is the good news at times. We need to stop playing church and stop acting like we don't know what the gospel is and start giving people things that give them substance, things that gives them life. We need to give people the good news. We need to fall away from people saying what God is getting ready to do. There's too many people saying your blessing is is around the corner and I just stopped by to tell somebody the truth of the matter is God did everything he had to do when he died on the cross. I don't know how long you've been in church. I don't know how often you come to church or what you do when you get to church but when I think about what God did on the cross, my soul gets happy. When I think about how they stuck nails in his hands, my soul gets happy. When I think about how they drove spikes through his feet, my soul gets happy. When I think about how they pierced him in his side and blood came streaming down, my soul gets happy because the Bible declares without the shedding of blood, there would be no remission of sins. I thought I was in church. You know, when you talk about the cross, you all should get excited. I know at times we want to think we're good and great and our frickle and frail finite being. But if it had not been for the Lord, you wouldn't even be dressed that way. If it had not been for the Lord, it's, it's time out for wondering what everybody else is going to think, what everybody else is going to do. When I talk about the gospel, my soul gets happy. In other words, watch this, because in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, he says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Let me read it again. He says, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. In other words, God took off who he was, put on who I was, and then he left it on the cross so that I might be saved and justified by faith through Christ Jesus. I guess y'all decided to go to sleep. Watch this. God took off who he was put on who I was and left it on the cross. I got about three people who got it. Let me see if I can say it a different way. You see, God took off who he was, put on who I was, and then he left it on the cross. In other words, he took on lying, but he wasn't a liar. He took on stealing, but he wasn't a thief. He took on, he took on murder, but he wasn't a murderer. He took on fornication, but he wasn't a fornicator. He took on prostitution, although he wasn't a prostitute. He took on, he, he took off who he was, put on who I was, and he left it on the cross. I'm so grateful that he took off who he was put on who I was, and left it on the cross. So as we get to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, there are some things that we must understand if our goal is to look like Christ. You see, at this point, the gospel has already been delivered. People have already been saved. They've already confessed Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And so now Paul is writing to them to show them how to apply the righteousness of God to their lives. I got three points, and then we'll go home. You see, the first thing he shows us is we have to deny ourselves. I knew I wasn't going to get a lot of amens, but I'm going to preach it anyhow. 
You see, because this is, this is the first point of us looking like Christ. We have to learn to deny ourselves. That word deny means that I have to be able to say no to me and yes to Christ. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, Jesus says to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must first deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Listen to what he says in verse 1. He says you have to be a living sacrifice. In other words, we have to deny ourselves now. Don't read that too fast. I know we've worked on this scripture over and over again, but when I read that, I had to stop myself and ask myself, what is a living sacrifice? sacrifice you see most pope people would call that an oxymoron how can i be living and sacrifice myself at the same time that's a oxymoron it doesn't make sense how can i be living breathing moving as an entity yet die every day you see the word living means to be a moving breathing a living entity the word sacrifice means to give up in other words what we need to do every day is we need to deny ourselves our pleasures and what we want in order to look more like christ um let me try to help you out um how 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 do we deny ourselves you know that person got on my last nerve they looked at me real dirty and I'm already having a bad day. So every time I see them, I'm going to cuss them out. I mean, uh, every time I see them, I'm going to forgive them. I got to deny myself. Okay, that's, that's not you. Um, 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 how, how do we deny ourselves every time power and empire come on TV? Um, 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 instead of doing God's business, I'm going to sit down because power and empire are more entertaining than God's word. Okay, that's not you. That's just me. Um, um, how, how do we deny ourselves? You see, how, 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 how do we get to a point where we say, this is not about me, but it's all about Christ. Let me try to help somebody in a different way. You see, when I come to church, I'm going to only come to church when the pastor of the church is preaching. Okay, that's not you. Um, 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 I'm only going to stand up to the songs that make me happy. Okay, that's not you. Um, 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 how, how do we deny ourselves? I'm only going to sing if they sing the songs I want them to sing. At some point, saints, we have to understand that this life of church and worship has nothing to do with us and everything to do with Christ. In other words, I don't care how you feel. I don't care what they did to you. I don't care what's going on. When I enter the house of worship, everything that's going on around me ceases, and my only priority is worship. That's what Paul was talking about when he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you would present yourself a living sacrifice it's not about me it's not about pastor it's not about deacons it's not about trustees it's about Christ and every time we enter the church collectively the goal should be Christ the message should be Christ the center should be Christ and I bet you some of y'all that still got your mouths closed some of y'all that still got your hands in your lap when you understand it's about Christ you will start waving your hands when you understand it's about Christ you'll get a stomp in your foot when you understand it's about Christ your soul will scream out hallelujah because the truth of the matter is if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side we have to deny ourselves we have to get out of the point that thinking of church and worship is all about me we don't have to follow some traditional program day in and day out we don't have to come in and do the call of worship and come in and do the prayer it's about christ the goal should be the question should be how can i please christ and you see if we can ever get to that point then we can deny ourselves we have to learn that our flesh and what we want would always rise that's why jesus says the flesh is willing i mean the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak 
There's always going to be something inside of you. But we have to learn to die to ourselves daily and, and, and ask ourselves, what would Christ do? I know it was a long time ago, but we used to wear those wristbands, WWJD. What would Jesus do? And some of y'all still need to find a wristband and ask yourself, what would Jesus do? When they cut me off on the interstate and I want to tailgate them for 20 miles, don't do it. Just ask yourself, what would Jesus do? When that person got on your last nerve and they hurt your feelings, don't get angry back and hold a grudge. Just ask yourself, what would Jesus do? I stopped by to tell somebody we have to learn how to deny ourselves and follow Christ. But not only must we learn how to deny ourselves, <clears throat> we also have to learn how to destroy our mindsets. Watch this, we got to stop thinking the way we've always thought and start doing things differently. Watch this, that word renew in the text means to break down and start over. I like doing projects. And when we first moved into our house, it stayed the same. Then eventually I got tired of looking at the bathroom the way it was. So I decided I was gonna do the bathroom floor over again. So I went through this whole process of reading and figuring out how to do it and I laid a new floor and I laid some tile and I said, ooh, that looks good. <laughs> but the problem was the bathroom still didn't look the way I needed it to look. Where are you going? Preacher, I'm going to catch you up in a minute. So later on down the road, I kept looking at this bathroom floor with the bathroom, and I said, we need to just redo the whole thing. So we hired somebody, and he came in, and he tore down every piece of plaster that was in the walls. He tore down every piece of board that was in there all the way to the studs, so it was nothing but wood. And one day I walked into that bathroom and it, it didn't have a tub, it didn't have a shower, it didn't have walls, it had the bare floor and the studs. And then he started over and started putting up drywall, he started over and started putting down tile floor and now we have a beautiful downstairs bathroom. What are you saying, preacher? You see too many of us as Christians, we find one thing we don't like about ourselves and we just try to change that one thing. Because we think like Amory said, it's that one thing that's got me tripping. Y'all ain't never heard that song. Okay, let me move on. It's that one thing. And so the truth of the matter is there's plenty of things that take over us. There's a lot of things that we need to get out. So in order to renew our minds, we got to tear down everything that's in the mind, every social acceptability, everything society says is okay. We got to take that out. And when we build afresh, we got to build with the word of God because there's life and liberty in the word of God. There's renewing and refreshments in the word of God. There's joy, hope, peace, love in the word of God. We have to change the way we thought. Watch this in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through 11. The Bible declares, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even to the cross, wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. In other words, if God can humble himself and change the way he thought, then so can we. It's time for us to tear down the mindsets that society has said we have to live up to. It's time to tear down those, those worldly dreams that we've placed in our mind. As a matter of fact, Jesus says, come, come to, to, to me and I will give you everything else. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these other things will be added unto you. 
We as Christians have to learn to change the way we think. As Christians, we do a great job giving the enemy so much power over our life and so much victory over our life situations. We say things like the devil's show is busy. The devil's show is messing with me. I don't know how I'm going to make it. I don't know how I'm going to get through. You need to stop thinking like that. Pick your head up. Stick your chest out. Come here, David, and tell yourself, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When it seems like the world is against you and your back's against the wall, you need to stop acting like you're defeated and tell yourself, greater is he that's in me, that he that's in the world. When you don't know where to go or who to look up to, I stop by to tell somebody, look up to the he from which coming your help. All of my help comes from the Lord when you don't know how you're going to make it. Tell yourself, I'm more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. When the enemy keeps throwing fiery darts around you, tell him no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You see, you got to talk to yourself over and over again because the more you talk to yourself, the more you start to believe it. Okay, y'all don't, don't believe me. Uh, uh, let me say it like this. I am a high school football coach, as many of you know. And with my wife, we do our best to raise our two beautiful little girls. And one word that is never allowed in my house is the word, I can't. Because when you say you can't, you have at that point physically told yourself that you are not capable of doing what you set your mind out to do. Uh, 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 when you tell yourself you can't, your mind begins to operate as though you can't, and then your body starts to follow. So instead of looking defeated and telling yourself that change is never going to come, start telling yourself change has to come. Instead of acting like the world is against you and your back's against the wall, keep telling yourself I'm more than a conqueror. We have to get out of a habit of saying what the devil is doing and start ta talking about what God can do. I serve a God who's bigger than the enemy. I serve a God who can, who can do anything but fail. That's why the Bible declares now unto him who can do everything absolutely anything but fail. It says, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the throne with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, dominion, and power forever. We have to stop acting like the cross was all for naught and the same victory that he got up is the same victory that we possess at, with, inside of us. Change the way you think. Stop giving the devil so much credit. The Bible declares even demons tremble at the name of Jesus. I don't care what situation, what trial and tribulation you find yourself in. The fact of the matter is God is bigger than that. I don't care if it's the last quarter with the last shot. I stop by to tell you God is bigger than that. I don't care if your marriage is on the rocks and it looks like it's over and you're ready to sign the papers. I stop by to tell somebody God is bigger than that. I don't know if you got cancer or you're some kind of sick. I just stop by to tell you God is bigger than that. I don't know what's going on in your life, who went astray. I just stop by to tell somebody God is bigger than that because God is able to do anything but fail. Not only must we deny ourselves. Not only must we destroy our mindset, but we also have to be determined until the end. Watch this, number 45 over the past several years has been dropping alternative facts and fake news. And on that same note, many Christians have been believing alternative facts for a long time. We believe that this Christian journey is supposed to be a walk on water. We believe that when we give the preacher our hand and God our hearts, that everything is supposed to be peaches and cream from here on out. We're supposed to live the rest of our life like it's gold and nothing else is supposed to go wrong. But I stopped by to tell somebody that's alternative facts. 
When we give the preacher our hand and God our heart, we begin to paint the picture that life is going to be good and golden. From here on out, I stop by to tell somebody, stop believing alternative facts. You see, Paul says to Timothy in his letter to Timothy, he says, endure hardships like a good soldier. And I like that text. He says, endure hardships like a good soldier. When he said that, I had to stop and I had to ask myself, what's the difference between a soldier and a good soldier? You see, a soldier is somebody that just does what they're supposed to do. And at some point, they might make a mistake and leave the rest of your platoon left for dead. But you see, a good soldier is willing to put themselves on the front line and testify that no matter what's going on, this is who I am. Paul says to Timothy, endure hardships like a good soldier. In other words, the world is going to be against you. The enemy is going to attack you, but stand on the front line and testify that for God I live and for God I die. Watch this in Luke chapter 22, verse 31. Jesus says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your family may fail. Jesus says, in this life you will have trouble, but be of good courage because I've overcome the world. Paul says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed, always abounding in the work of Christ Jesus. In other words, this life is not easy. This Christian walk is not a walk in the park. It's going to be hell and high water. But I stopped by to tell somebody that you can make it. Watch this. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, he says, even youth grow tired and weary, and even young men stumble and fall. But those who trust in the Lord, will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and not faint. And don't read that too fast. Too, don't read that too fast, child of God, because normally one would go from walking to running to flying. But the writer says you'll soar, you'll run, and then you'll walk. And that's because he understood that when life throws its best shot at you, God would have to pick you up and carry you through. Then as you grow in God and your faith grows, you can begin to run through your pains and pearls and trials and tribulations. And when you get real good at this thing called Christianity, you won't have to be carried. You won't have to run. You can walk through your pains and problems with your chest out and your head up. That's why David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for God is with me. His rod and staff, they come for me. Is there anybody here that can testify that I'm at a point now where I've been able to walk through my problems? I've been able to walk through my pains. I've been able to strut through my problems and my situations because God is my strength and my refuge and a very present help in the time of trouble. As I go to my seat, you know I've learned that everything we do has to be Christocentric. That means everything we do has to revolve around Christ. And as I looked at this text, I realized that even Christ follows these same three steps. The Bible declares he was slain before the foundation of the world. He says, on his way to the cross, he says, let this cup pass from me. Nonetheless, not my will, but thy will be done. That was Jesus' way of denying himself and saying, Lord, if you want me to go, I'll go. Man, many times we, we paint the cross as some great picture, but he didn't want to go. The Bible says in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was sweating tears of blood. He says, let this cup pass from me. Nonetheless, not my will, but thy will be done. That was his de denial. Then while he was on the cross and they were mocking him, when they were sticking uh, uh, crowns in his head, he looks down and he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That was a different mindset. And then he said, it is finished. That was his determination to stick it through until the end. And you've just heard the gospel again. But I'm so grateful, church, that that's not the end of the gospel. He didn't finish laying down on the cross because, because, because my Bible declares that one day he's going to crack 
the sky and come for a church without a spot or wrinkle. Is there anybody here that can testify that I'm grateful that God didn't stop in the grave? Is there anybody that can testify I'm so glad that blood came streaming down? Is there anybody that can testify I'm so grateful that he didn't finish there? He's going to finish with me. That's why the old folks used to sing a song that says, Soon as I get home, I'm going to put on my robe and tell my story of how I made it over because they understood life was wouldn't always be pretty. They understood that life wouldn't always be great, but, but they sang the song that says, soon as I get over, I'm going to put on my robe, tell my story of how I made it over, because the truth of the matter is, pains won't stop. The truth of the matter is, problems won't stop. The truth of the matter is, life still is going to be hell and hot water, but because he got up, you can get up. Because he got up, you can get up. Because he was victorious you can be victorious I just stopped by today to tell somebody I don't want to be like Mike I want to be like Christ may God bless you may I have a smile upon you I don't want to be like Mike, I want to be like Christ. Deny yourself, destroy your mindset, then have a determination to finish. Let's give him a hand clap of praise for just letting God use him. Amen. Amen. So this time we want to extend an invitation that if you are here today, if you have a desire to be like someone other than the person that you've been looking up to, if you have a desire to have a real and a true role model, that desire of being to be like Christ, to have a role model like Christ, we ask that you would come forward A desire to be like Christ. That scripture talks about having a renewal, renewing your mind, presenting your body as a living sacrifice. That we've got to lay down some things. We've got to quit doing some things. We have to deny ourselves of the way the way that we, we've lived. It's a different change of life. It's a change in our lifestyle, change in the way that we think. And if that is you today, we ask that you would come. I want to be like Christ. And we often talk about that or we speak of that you can't do it on your own. You can't wait till a time that when you get ready because you never be ready and you can't get ready without Christ. You have to come as you are. And he will meet you right where you are in the condition that you're in can't do it on your own. If you desire prayer, we ask that you would come. That you have to be willing to surrender all. God's love is deep enough, wide enough, and it's real enough that he can save, save us all. Jesus has done but if you're lost and you're wayward even if you're standing in the need of prayer what you need to know right now is that 
Jesus knows your name. He knows what you stand in need of. You just have to be willing to come and let him work it out for you. Amen. I want to be like Christ. As we close, just as a reminder, we ask that you would just keep Pastor in prayer that he is at Eddieville alone today, preaching three sermons. And it is his desire, as well as it should be our desire, that souls will be saved. This is a door that God has opened that he said that he'd been trying to get there for a number of years. And this was the day that it was all in God's time. And we're going to pray. And we're going to be in confidence that someone is going to be saved today that was lost due to the fact that God opened, on, opened that door on this day for Pastor Nelson. He will be back on Wednesday for noonday Bible study as well as the uh, Wednesday night Bible study. So we just ask again you just keep him lifted up in prayer. And we also just ask that you keep one another lifted up in prayer. And we are so thankful that Minister Chan was an open vessel, that he let God use him in the way and manner that God saw fit, that it was all about God. Minister Chan denied him on self and let God have his way. And we just pray that you be blessed throughout this week and just be comforted in knowing that God knows your name, God loves you, God has you, and that there is nothing that you and God together cannot conquer. We just thank you for being here today. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for what you have done on the day. We thank you for the word that you have sent. We thank you for the messenger. We just ask that you would just continue to use him as you see fit. We ask as we're on our way out that you would just be with us throughout this coming week. Let us know that we are blessed. Let us know that we have been encamped by the angels of God just because we belong to you and we know that you belong to us. And we just ask, God, that you would just continue to keep us. Now may the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another. And we all say together, amen. amen.